And so like many of us fans of certain series, we all like to take part in an epic adventure design and scale and be there until the final moments of the game to where the story ends. Titanfall is one of those games where the story is so interesting and ever expanding that the devs made a spiritual sequel to the base game based around Battle Royale without even finishing the series first. Go figure. But even then, thankfully the sequel does expand on how the world of Titanfall carries on after the war. This is great for a multitude of reasonings, but one thing that has been eluding the player base for many years is how exactly the war ended and why we don't see certain figures from the past become known in the future events of Apex Legends. Now if we ignore Blisk, Bangalore and Ash, we don't know what the fates of a lot of characters from the war is, which is understandable, it's war. But in this case here we actually don't know what happened at the final battle of Gridiron and all the forces and titans involved as it's been stated that the battle of Gridiron was the biggest and final battle of the Militia vs IMC war and no one came back from it. This means all those pilots, grunts, commanders, ships, etc that went to battle on the planet never came back and thus tells us that something big happened that had to be hushed up from those from above. If this was the case, then what could possibly happen that caused so much controversy that it had to be quieted up and kept from the public? I have a few ideas as to what could have happened, but before we go ahead and look into this, let's first take a look at what Gridiron really is. Gridiron is a planet on the frontier in the universe of Timefall. It is home to a population of 90 million and has been extensively terraformed by its inhabitants. Despite this, its surface is baked in deadly solar radiation from its parent star, leading to periods where residents cannot step into direct sunlight for more than a few seconds without severe risk of injury. Gridiron is known to support at least one city called New Anchorage and a training ground for IMZ pilots known as the Training Ground Whitehead. Less than 100 miles from Whitehead is an abandoned reservoir codenamed Rise, where it experiences severe drought and is utilised by Frontier Militia Special Forces as a long-range desert patrol outpost. Economy-wise, there are several companies operating in Gridiron with most noticeably being Vision Dynamics who have a facility on Gridiron. In relation to other worlds on the Frontier, Gridiron is connected to the core system by the refueling facilities on planet Cybus and the planet Demeter after it. So from this information, we know that Gridiron is a desolate desert-based planet that is home to a major training facility for IMC pilots and is a major stronghold for the IMC who use the desert region to test experimental gear. Now we the players have actually visited part of the planet before, two times. The first based in Type 1 in the multiplayer map or training facility and the second on the map of Rise. So we have a bit of experience from what the landscape looks like. From all of this, you would expect that perhaps the IMC forces, seeing how they were being beaten back by militia forces, decided to have their last stand on the planet, and the Vision Dynamics faction, with all their toying around and designed, created something so powerful that literally wiped out both forces by accident, like a certain super weapon in Titanfall 2. Now this, for my theory, sounds plausible as the Ark super weapon we phased in Time for 2 was initially complete but never got the chance to destroy the planet Harmony in the process. But we did see the destructive capabilities of it. I would not be surprised if the IMC forces took the research and design with them before the planet blew up and then crafted their work on the planet Gridiron again but failed in the process again. The problem with this theory though is that this was overseen by General Murada, who is known for his strict attitude of failure, and seeing the results of the last experiment done, I highly doubt he would redo it again. So what about a similar event to what happened to the Battle of Dimeter? Now that is possible as it's part of the IMC refueling stops along with Cybus. As the attack on Dimeter was considered suicidal because of how heavily defended the area was and how also how radioactive the planet's surface was, it wouldn't be far off if the militia forces decided to do another raid on the planet and put the IMC out of action with little to no reinforcements coming. As of now, because of the destruction of Dimeter, reinforcements from the frontier has yet to come, which shows the sacrifice made was worth it. The problem about this theory though, I hardly doubt the militia forces want to repeat this same suicide tactic again as they lost many of their own in the battle 
and pretty much all the commanders involved stay this with M badly no matter if they win or lose. Repeating such a tactic again on another heavy defender planet won't be something the militia is going to be doing anytime soon. So then what could have possibly happened? Well, that's generally hard to say as there really isn't any sort of information around, but there is something we can rely on which is briefly explains what's happened on the battle before everything went quiet. From the Apex Legend Pathfinder book, there is a section that talks about the final battle and how everyone aware of it from the outside don't know what even happened there and then. But there was apparently a big blackout in the year 2715 that cut off all communication for both sides and since then, the Outlands and the Frontier haven't been able to communicate at all. Now this sounds a bit odd because why did a blackout happen? And why at the end of it no one came back from it? Or why did the victors never mention anything to anyone? If it was a major battle, there would at least be some sort of information around explaining what exactly happened on the ground and who committed the blackout, etc. But none of that is available. Plus, if it was another battle of the Minotaur event, we'd have at least heard something about this from the IMC, who were heavily affected by this. Could it be that the blackout wasn't done by the IMC or militia, but by a third party instead, such as Spyglass, from the Remnant fleet? Remember, at the events of Time for One, Spyglass went off on his own for his own objectives in the war. What if he came back and caused the major event to occur? Now, you're probably thinking, why that would be the case? I don't honestly know, because even the mystery behind Spyglass is something for another day, because honestly, he's one of the most mysterious characters that we have little to no information on as to what his plan of action was, and why he decided to go rogue on the IMC forces. But with Spyglass being the case, what if by chance the Syndicate from the Apex Legends had a role in the events behind the scene? They did take over after the war, and seeing how weak and powerless both the IMC and Militia were after the war, they could have easily had the upper hand in overwhelming them and forcing them to bend a knee. Someone or something had an objective on their end to keep the battle on the planet a hush-hush to everyone, and thanks to that blackout, only a handful of people knew or even know about the events there. Now, another thing to take away from this is that Bangalore from Apex Legend mentions that it takes roughly 20 years to get from Gridiron to the Frontier, without any fast travelling devices to speed this up. What if the blackout caused not only a communication shutdown, but also affected all electronics and transport for interplanet travel. What if the militia actually won the fight, but because of the blackout and damaged forces, they were either stranded out there for good, or they're taking the time to get back home as they have no fuel left. This may mean they are still out there as of today, but have no way of communicating or speeding up their process. They're just slowly drifting through space and hoping they get home eventually. A very freaky and saddening event to the war if that is the case, as everyone back at home may think they abandoned them, but truthfully, they're stuck and there's no way of helping them at all. What do you think? Do you think there's some insidious reasoning behind the battle and why no one knows anything about it? Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall 2 content. If you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.